Hi, I'm Mark Duhane with Pro Photo Automation. I decided to put together a presentation that gives an overview of the state of professional photography automation systems. Uh, it's definitely become a big trend here, especially in the last few years. Uh, automation is providing invaluable benefits to customers that have decided to invest in this type of solution. Um, my background, I've got 25 years of photography, uh, printing, uh, digital uh, support service sales. Uh, so I've been around the industry quite a while, but my main focus in the last six years has been on automation and automation tools. And it's changed quite a bit even in those six years. But as a company, we've decided to make a decision on where we want to go, what we think is the best fit for this type of solution for our customers. Again, based on input that we've learned from our customers, the things they're asking for, the questions they come up with. So I decided to put together a presentation that reviews a lot of these things, and hopefully it'll be a benefit to you. Hopefully it'll answer some questions for you. Um, we're always here, of course, um, to, to answer questions and help. Uh, we love to consult with companies and help them uh, streamline their workflows and make them much more efficient. So let's move forward with our slides. And in each slide, uh, there'll be a little video, and I'll provide my input. OK, so here's a quick summary of the things that we're going to discuss in this presentation. Uh, the first thing is to be why automation. Uh, obviously, you know, why is automation uh, something you should look at? What benefits are there? Um, the next is if you decide to go with automation, what's the right system to choose? Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the biggest reasons companies do not invest in automation. And uh, it's actually some interesting points there. And at the end, we'll kind of summarize all of these points, and then we'll provide you with our recommendation in the direction that we as a company have decided to go as far as the solution that we're going to offer to our clients. Okay, our first topic is why automation? So why is this something that you should look at? Uh, and we'll hit four major subjects here. Uh, first is uh, the issue of time constraint, uh, the ability to improve image quality and consistency, uh, the ability to reduce costs, and also the flexibility in the creation of digital asset types and image styles. So all four of these things are, are very important and part of uh, uh, what you need to look at when deciding on uh, automated photography. So let's hit each of these uh, slide by slide. Okay, the first item we want to talk about in regard to why automation is time constraints. So most customers we're dealing with uh, are always uh, frustrated with production deadlines. Um, you know, samples are late. It's always, it's always a time issue getting imaging done. And obviously, the uh, longer it takes to get an image online or on your website, the longer it is before you could sell it and generate revenue. So meeting production deadlines is key. Uh, then, of course, part of meeting deadlines is you have to eliminate time and costs, especially of, of post-editing. Uh, and we'll talk more about some of the features of automated photography, uh, auto background removal, for example, that helps eliminate the time and the cost of, uh, of post-editing. Uh, and again, I touched on it briefly there, significantly reduce time to market. So again, the faster you can get your products online, the faster you can start selling them, the quicker you can realize revenue. And then scale for growth. So you know, today, while you may be uh, shooting a certain amount of products and you have certain production needs, where are you going to be a year from now, two years from now? Uh, that's very important to consider long term the value of implementing uh, automation. Uh, again, uh, with, with automation, you can control those costs. And as your uh, production needs grow, your cost hopefully can remain uh, more flat. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the ability to have some flexibility in the use of creative resources. So again, with time savings, it gives you more time to maybe redeploy assets, rede redeploy creative teams to uh, do other types of creative uh, jobs. Uh, maybe that's. Um, uh, different types of photography, maybe it's more uh, shooting on location or it's more lifestyle type of uh, uh, assets you need to produce. But bottom line, uh, time savings uh, is huge because it allows you to have more time and more budget to do the things that you might not otherwise have the time or budget to do.
The next topic we want to discuss is quality and consistency. So when you're looking at automation, uh, you want to make sure you have a system that can uh, improve your quality of your images and actually improve the consistency of your images. And all that is very, very important. So at the same time, if you can improve your quality, improve your consistency with a fast and efficient process, and at the same time save money, that's a win-win for everybody. And again, image quality and consistency, it converts into greater online sales conversion. So again, a significant impact on the bottom line. And then, again, with this uh, ability, you, you create a great competitive advantage. So are you creating better images and digital assets than your competitors? Or maybe you have to compete with much larger companies that have much bigger budgets for their photography, and you find it very difficult to compete just from a, a cost standpoint, be able to create images that compete with their images. Well, with automation, it allows you to play in the same game as they do, and you can effectively compete with larger competitors. So our next topic is basically cost reduction. Uh, so by improving your production and efficiency, it will result in lower cost per image. Uh, and then gaining efficient control of this whole process uh, will definitely reduce cost. And it does that by uh, helping with post-editing costs to reduce those costs. It can reduce logistics costs. Think about if you're, if you're having to send product around to have it photographed, just the cost and time it takes to ship product around. Uh, and all this is done while, while being able to drive more revenue with faster time to market, which we discussed earlier. Uh, and again, the benefit of increased production. Uh, and then reduced costs and time will allow for flexibility uh, that will allow you to maybe deploy assets to create digital assets that maybe before you weren't able to do, either because of budget or because of time. So now you can possibly look at doing video, maybe video content, something you always wanted to do or you know you want to do in the future, but you just didn't have time or budget to do it. Uh, same with 360 spin presentations. So uh, the reduced cost and time will allow you that flexibility. And then again, scalability, as we discussed before, as your volume grows, uh, the automation will keep up with your demand. So uh, depending on what you're shooting today, in a year, two, three years down the road, uh, odds are you'll be having to shoot more images. And by investing in uh, a system that provides this uh, type of automation, it will keep those costs flat. So uh, as your volume grows, your costs can remain more flat, uh, which again is a great benefit to the bottom line. Okay, the last subject we want to talk about when it comes to automation and, and why automation is flexibility. So automation will provide the flexibility to create different types of digital assets, whether that's traditional 2D images, multi-angle images, video, or 360 spin presentations. All that is possible with these automated systems. Uh, and not only the type of digital asset, but the image style. So the flexibility of doing different types of image styles, for example, uh, you know, obviously traditional product shots, maybe uh, flat lay or on mannequin or on model. So all different types of image styles are possible uh, with automation. And then also the flexibility uh, issue comes to the, to the uh, ability to choose the type of operator that you want to run these systems. So uh, having a system that you could customize the, the interface based on the skill set of your operator uh, is very, very useful and very, very helpful. And again, just provides much more overall flexibility of a system. Okay, the next main topic we want to discuss is once you know about automation and it's something you want to pursue, it's what's the right system to choose? So choosing the right automated system. Uh, the first thing we'll talk about is you know, identifying the problem, the problems you need to solve. Uh, the next is understanding what type of products you have to shoot. Uh, next is, you know, what type of flexibility needs do you have in a system. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about control versus ease of use. It's actually a very important subject we'll talk about. Then we'll talk a little bit more about the manufacturers of these types of systems, you know, software versus hardware manufacturers, and some key points there. And then obviously the importance of, of support. And then we'll talk about price and value which of course at the end of the day, um, it's, this is an investment that you're making, so price and value is, is, is very, very important.
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about identifying the problem you need to solve. So obviously, if you're looking at automation, you have uh, some problems you're looking, you're looking to solve. You have some maybe some workflow issues, um, but you need to identify what those problems are so you can find the best systems to solve those problems. And what we see out there most commonly is the ability, again, to uh, maintain the increased quality of your images and definitely to create consistent images. Uh, also, people want to take control of the entire imaging process. Uh, maybe some are outsourcing today or doing some in-house and outsourcing some. They want to get control of the entire process. Uh, and, th and that's a problem they're trying to solve. Uh, and then again, we've talked about meeting production deadlines. So again, time is always a, a problem. Uh, cost control is definitely a problem that we see out there. So, so getting all this under control from a cost standpoint. Uh, and then the ability to reduce and simplify the post-editing process. Because if you could accomplish that, it, it actually addresses a lot of these other issues, uh, other problems that you may be having. Uh, and then identifying, you know, where is the bottleneck? Um, because again, a lot of this does get back to time. And somewhere in your process, there's a bottleneck. And being able to identify what that is and how to solve it will again help you address the best uh, solution possible to, uh, to identify an automation system that will, that will help with these issues. Okay, this next subject is, is, is pretty basic, but it's basically, you know, identifying the product types that you need to shoot. So, you know, what is it that your, your company sells? What type of images do you need to produce? But is it for apparel? Is it accessories? Is it electronics? Uh, is it parts, whether it be auto parts or hardware? Uh, is it jewelry? Is it home goods, furniture? Is it something else? But, you know, having a handle on exactly what type of products you have, what type of images you need to best represent those products, very important when choosing an automated system. Okay, the next subject we're going to talk about in regard to choosing the right automated system is the uh, issue of flexibility. So, you know, now that you understand, here's the type of products that we sell, uh, how do we want to represent those products uh, as far as the creation of digital assets, and what type of image types do we need? Uh, so again, you need to look at a system that is very flexible in what it can produce, uh, whether it be you know, 2D, standard 2D images, multi-angle images, 360 spin presentations, video content, and then you know, the type of uh, images. Uh, you know, for example, if you're in the fashion industry, you know, do you need to do on mannequin images as well as flat lays, or maybe even on model? Uh, do you need traditional product shots? You know, what are your background requirements? Do you need a background removed? Do you need it on pure white, a consistent pure white background? Do you need the ability to... Uh, uh, redeploy the asset in different background colors. Um, and then what type of file types do you require? Uh, do you need JPEGs, PNG, TIFFs for, for print possibly, uh, video file formats, MP4s? Uh, all that is important to consider uh, uh, in regard to having a flexible automated system. Then lastly, it's like who are you going to have operate the system? Uh, and you got to make sure that the interface is conducive to the type of person in the skill set like we discussed earlier whether it's a very skilled photographer, you want to make sure that they have the ability to operate it and have control the way they'd like to have it. Or if you have less, a less skilled operator, is the ease of use there uh, so that they can operate the system and still get the results. So all that's very important. Flexibility is a key point when it comes to choosing an automated system. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about uh, is in relationship more to the interface uh, of these automated systems. And it's uh, the issue of control versus ease of use. Um, and when choosing a system, an automated system, you want to make sure that it has a customizable interface that's built to be used by operators with different skill sets, as we discussed earlier. Uh, for example, if you have a very skilled and experienced photographer, they're going to want uh, camera control, you know, aperture, exposure, ISO, the typical things that they really want control of as far as the camera is concerned. They want to have control of lighting, right? So having independent lighting zone control is very important to them. Uh, having the ability to have some built-in editing tools, uh, which they're used to using, is, is very, very important. Um, and then if you have less skilled operators, you need an interface that's uh, simplified. Um, so maybe some tools they're not used to using or don't need to use. You want to simplify that interface. You want to have template-based workflows. So you can set up templates where they don't have to go in and remember, hey, what was that lighting setting for this type of product that we shot before? All these templates can be saved. 
So having a, 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 an interface that not only gives you the control you need, but also has the ease of use. Again, that, as we talked about in the flexibility slide, uh, this is very, very important because it gives you that, that ability to customize the system based on the operator that you have running the system. So bottom line is do not sacrifice control for ease of use. Find a system that provides both. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about software versus hardware manufacturers. So there's automated systems on the market, and in our experience, uh, what we've seen that there's many providers of automation that are basically software engineering companies. They're not necessarily hardware companies, so they don't manufacture their own lights, for example. Uh, what they do is they create uh, software solutions primarily to optimize background removal, and then they'll bundle that with outsourced third-party hardware. And that can create, you know, technical and support issues. Uh, you know, for example, if a third-party hardware manufacturer discontinues a product, you run the risk of a system that can't be supported. Uh, so your long-term investment could be at risk. Um, also, when it comes to support, response time could be delayed. If you're dealing with a piece of hardware actually from a third party that your vendor has to go back to them for support on, it just takes that much longer for you to get support. So that's something you really want to be aware of. Uh, so really what you want to do is identify a solution where the vendor is the manufacturer of both the software and the hardware. Uh, someone that's a developer of both software solutions, hardware systems, for example, lighting is a really good example. Uh, this will provide a much more reliable uh, system, typically a more industrial-based system uh, that will uh, last longer, like I said, much more reliable. And at the end of the day, it will provide much more superior results because the integration of software and hardware is the key to automation. And uh, software knowing what the hardware does just makes it much more of a reliable and better quality system. So look for a manufacturer that provides both of those things. Okay, the next topic I want to discuss is that of support. So when choosing an automated system, uh, again, it gets back to choosing a, prov uh, a provider or a vendor that can act as a local partner and consultant. So in other words, they understand your business, they have experience integrating, supporting automated photography systems in various types of industry. Uh, also, they have geographical coverage, uh, you know, the ability to provide installation, training, support in your actual time zone. Uh, and they have in-country training and demonstration centers. So it gets very difficult when you're dealing, for example, with uh, a manufacturer overseas that does not have, you know, local resources. Again, it's just difficult to get support. Uh, time zones create an issue. So look for a solution that has more localized support, uh, more local geographic coverage, and a company that is very consultative, um, really understands your business, and has experience in various types of industries. Uh, it'll go a long way in uh, making your transition into automation much, much easier. Okay, let's talk a little bit about price and value. So deciding to invest in automation technology, it, it's a long-term investment. Uh, and you want to invest in a solution where the vendor can be a really good long-term partner. So make sure you choose a system that has a reputation for reliability first and foremost. Uh, and it's built for industrial use. So you want it to keep up uh, with, with production demands that you may have. And then again, system flexibility, um, being able to invest in a system that it's, it's not one-dimensional, right? So a system where there's uh, flexibility can be a much better value in the long run. Uh, you know, so don't get stuck with a system that requires you to invest in multiple systems in order to achieve uh, your current and future imaging goals. This can be become very, very cost prohibitive. Uh, and then when re researching pricing, don't only consider the purchase price of a system. Consider the cost of ownership over time. I can't stress this enough. Uh, less expensive systems, uh, they may cost less now, but they tend over time uh, due to downtime, support issues, and unstable interfaces, they'll end up costing you more. So, so not only look at price, but look at overall cost of ownership over time. 
and definitely take that into account when uh, analyzing what's the best system for you and what's the best value for your company. Okay, the next main thing we want to discuss is the three biggest reasons that we see that companies do not invest or at least initially invest in automated technology. And those three things are perception, change, and cost. So let's talk about each of those three uh, reasons that we have uh, encountered when talking to potential clients. Okay, let's talk a little bit about one of the biggest um, reasons that we've seen companies not adapt uh, automation into their photography workflow. And that, that reason is perception. And, and, and truly, there's companies out there that have a perception that automation will reduce the control of the photo process and can basically limit creativity. And like I said, I've been involved in automation now for, for over six years. And while that may have been true early on, in today's systems, you can find a system that provides uh, complete camera control over, over camera settings, lighting zone control, uh, customizable background removal capabilities, uh, as well as image editing tools. So there's a lot different solutions today than there were six years ago, where I don't know that this perception is as valid as it may have been, say, five or six years ago. So I would just encourage companies that are looking at automation and may have this perception to really take a close look at these systems, because I believe, again, that perception may not be as valid today as it was five or six years ago. Okay, let's talk again about uh, reasons we see that companies don't invest in automation. And one of the major reasons we hear out there is in regard to change. So companies will tell us that they just don't have the ability to change what they're doing today. And it sounds kind of crazy, but if you look at the benefits of automation, the fact that they could save money, save time, uh, have flexibility and control over the process, they're just incapable of changing their internal structures so that they, they shy away from automation for that purpose. Um, and, and the problem with that is, uh, you know, companies are now much more willing to embrace this type of change in order to reap the benefits, and it's really providing a large competitive advantage. So companies that are unwilling to change um, with any technology, technologies come and, and at some point you need to adapt. And uh, we see a lot of companies out there that are just unwilling to make that change regardless of the benefits. So um, that's something we can you know, discuss with our clients and, and, and show them the benefits. But at the end of the day, they have to have the ability to change what they're doing in order to progress and move forward. Okay, the third reason that we see companies not pursuing automation is it's really their perception that the cost of an automated system is way too expensive. So it, it really is a, a, a misconception that we see out there. Uh, companies that have a good handle on their cost structure, they'll realize pretty quick that investment in the right solution provides a really quick return on investment. And not only that, it really positions them for future growth. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the ability to compete um, with these types of systems to help you be competitive with, with uh, not only your, your typical competitor, but maybe with companies that are much bigger and have larger imaging budgets, uh, but also scales. These solutions scale. So as, you're, as you grow and as your imaging volume grows, the automation portion keeps up with that demand. So it really keeps your cost structure down. And it's a critical part of uh, the analysis when you look at uh, the overall cost of a system. So again, it's, it's, it's value over time. But uh, companies that have a good handle on this, and we help our clients go through this process to do that analysis, but sometimes the initial perception is that the cost is going to be too high. And then for that reason, they don't pursue it. So again, uh, with, with a little bit of uh, work and analysis, we can really show how uh, overall the cost of the system is a true benefit, especially to the bottom line of the company.
Okay, now we're in the home stretch. Let's let's summarize uh, what we've discussed uh, in regard to automated photography. Um, one thing for sure, automated photography, it's a growing uh, and beneficial trend. Um, more and more people are investing in automation, especially over the last few years. Uh, it definitely creates valuable time and cost savings for companies. Uh, it provides significant competitive advantages to those that choose to adapt and, and integrate automation. Um, and you got to invest in the right system. That's very, very important when you, you make this type of investment. It's a long-term investment, so make sure you do your homework. Uh, make sure you deal with a manufacturer that are experts in both software and hardware. Uh, make sure they have staff that's experienced and consultative. They really understand your business. Um, make sure that their solution provides the flexibility and long-term value. So, uh, again, you might have some needs today, um, but have a system that has a flexibility to help you maybe future needs. Um, so all these are just very important parts uh, of the decision-making process that you need to understand uh, before deciding on what system to use. Okay, now we're at the end, and I want to be able to share with you, uh, based on what we've learned from our research, from input from our clients, from our experience, what we recommend as the best uh, automated photography system out there. It's one that we're going to recommend, one that we're going to sell and support um, based on all of our research. Uh, but first, let's just review the check boxes. Uh, these are all things that we discussed in our presentation. Uh, we want to make sure that the solution that we choose, uh, that the company uh, that manufactures the system are experts in both hardware and software integration, not just one or the other. You want to make sure they have a really good reputation when it comes to reliability and providing long-term value. Uh, and that their staff is experienced and has strong local support. Uh, also that they take a consultative approach, that they really understand your business, that they understand uh, how this uh, automation affects different types of industries. Uh, also that their systems are flexible. So it allows you not only to create uh, digital assets that you need today, but maybe different types of digital assets that either you weren't able to do because of the cost and time it took, uh, or in the future you're looking to do different things uh, depending on market trends. So a flexible system is very, very important. Uh, and then also having a system where the interface is customizable based on the skill set of the operator. So different companies have different skill sets when it comes to their creative teams. And having the ability to have an interface that's customizable just makes it a much more flexible, much more valuable solution. And also you want a system that has the industry best auto background removal, uh, removal system. Um, and what I mean by that is, is having something that's actually customizable based on the type of product you're shooting. So whether there's a lot of reflectivity or transparency in the product, you want a background removal system where in the interface itself, at time of image capture, you could actually customize that background removal. Very, very important. And then at the end of the day, with all these boxes checked, you're looking for something that has the best overall value for the investment that you're going to make. So if we flip to the next slide, I'll let you know what we recommend as the automated photography solution of choice. Okay, so here's our recommendation. Uh, based on all of our research, based on all the things we've discussed, we truly feel that OrbitView has the best automated photography solution on the market today. We highly recommend that you visit OrbitViewUSA.com, learn about the different solutions that they have. Uh, they've got great solutions. Their background removal is the best in the industry. They're a very good hardware and software developer and manufacturer. They really hit all those check boxes that we discussed. Uh, and they provide a great value, both short and long term. Uh, so uh, automated photography is a path you choose. Orbit view is the direction we would recommend you go. Thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Take care.